Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Learn English Through Interesting Topics podcast.、Uh, it's not the most amazing name, but it does exactly what it says. So we're going to be learning about a bunch of different interesting topics, but hopefully along the way you're going to be improving your grammar, your pronunciation. We're going to have a look at vocabulary and expressions, slang, things like that. So let's get started. And today's topic is going to be about a movie that I saw recently, and it was called The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. And this podcast is really for English learners between the levels of intermediate and advanced. So in the intro, you probably heard me say, "Today we're going to be learning about." All、right, so gonna is just another informal way to talk about the future. So today we're gonna be learning about is just a quick way to say today we are going to be learning about or today we will learn about. So going to learn just changes to gonna learn. And I also mentioned a bunch of different topics. So a bunch could just mean like a lot of different topics or many different topics. So first, I'm just gonna warn you that there are going to be some spoilers in this podcast. So what are spoilers? Well, to spoil the verb just means like if I spill coffee on my shirt, then I spoil my shirt or I, I ruin my shirt. Okay. So maybe you haven't seen this movie yet. So when I give you information about the story and the characters, when you go and see the movie, maybe it won't be a surprise for you because you know that information. That means that I have spoiled the movie for you or I have given you spoilers. So, if you don't want to hear these spoilers, then maybe go and watch the movie first, and then come back to this podcast. Or if you're just okay with spoilers, then just keep going. So let's just look at the name of the movie. So, the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Buster Scruggs is just a name for one of the characters in the movie. And a ballad, a ballad is generally a song with a story. Okay, so it's not like you know Lady Gaga or Justin Bieber, where it's a song like you know Let's Dance, Dance, Dance on the On the dance floor, floor, none of that. There's an actual full story to the song. So if you listen to Bob Dylan or Johnny Cash, they both sing a lot of ballads. You know, there's a lot of story to their lyrics. So the film was written, directed, and produced by the Cohen brothers, right? So the Cohen brothers are just they are Joel Cohen and Ethan Cohen, and they are a pair of brothers. Okay, a pair, two, two brothers who work together and they write, direct, and produce movies. So writing a movie involves writing the screenplay. Okay, so they sat down, you know, maybe with a with a notepad, and they wrote the, the characters and the story, all of that. The directed part refers to actually capturing the video and capturing the sound, and also managing all of the the actors. And producing a movie just refers to the bigger picture. Okay, so producers would choose a screenplay. They would choose a director. They could maybe choose some of the actors, but they they would also manage a lot of the the business side of the the movie. So this movie is a western anthology film. Okay, so a western is just that typical kind of John Wayne movie or Clint Eastwood. You know, a lot of cowboys and guns and violence and bar fights. And a lot of the characters and the story of westerns are based on, you know, the early American settlers who traveled from the east coast of America over to the west coast. So the west coast of America was just the the backdrop or the background for a lot of western movies. So an anthology film is just a, one movie that has many different stories, many different separate stories inside the one movie. So in the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, there are six different. Stories, or you could say, six different short films inside the one movie, and the film features a few famous actors. So this movie, the the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, features actors like Liam Neeson, James Franco, Brendan Gleeson,、uh, a few other actors that I don't know, but there's the the famous singer Tom Waits. You could say this movie features or stars these actors. So the setting or the location for these short stories is based on the American frontier. So frontier just refers to something that is still unknown. So at that time, the west of North America was unknown. That land was unknown. So it was known as the the American frontier. So nowadays we could say that every bit of land on Earth has been travelled and explored. So there are no real frontiers left on Earth, you know, as in land. But I suppose for us the 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 next frontier would be space because nearly everything about space and the universe is still pretty much really unknown to us. So there are mentioned every bit of land. Okay, so bit, b i t. So that's the same as saying every piece of land or every part of land has been explored. And I also said that space is still pretty much unknown to us. 
So pretty much you could also say more or less. Okay, so space is more or less still unknown to us or space is pretty much unknown to us. All right, so the first story involves the character Buster Scruggs and he is just this cheerful, happy, okay, jolly, very friendly. These are all just words for, for happy, yeah? Uh, he, he's a very chatty, he talks a lot. Uh, he's this chatty guy that just always ends up shooting everyone in the bar. So when you say that somebody always ends up doing something means that in every situation they're in, in, in the end, the same thing always happens. You know, they, they end up doing that thing. What's great about this movie and generally just other Coen brother movies is that there's nothing really predictable in this movie. You know, a lot of times when you watch movies these days, you kind of know what's going to happen from start to finish and you can guess what's going to happen next. But this movie and other Coen brother movies, like you, you just, it's kind of strangely fascinating and just very, very unpredictable. So when something is predictable, it means that it is very easy to see what will happen in the future or what will happen next. But this movie is unpredictable. So in this first story, the first thing you see is this cowboy riding on his horse very slowly, playing a guitar at the same time and singing. And he's totally alone. And the scenery, okay, the view around him is he's, he's just riding alone through, through the canyons. You know, the canyons of North America. So the canyons are, just think of, you know, the Grand Canyon. I'm sure most people know what they look like. You know, they're just very interesting rock formations. And he's got this big smile on his face and then he's singing in a, just a very kind of happy way, but it's kind of awkward because you, the song takes so long. And then he stops and he just talks to the camera directly and you're kind of left thinking, what is going on? This is a strange start to a movie. You are left thinking is just your reaction to something, okay? When something happens, then it leaves you thinking something to yourself. So he's kind of like this person that you meet that is just way too happy. You know, they're really, like extremely happy and you're kind of thinking, thinking to yourself like, okay, that's good that they're happy, but why this happy? And he's very talkative, okay? So talkative just means that he talks a lot. All right, so it's brilliant in a way because there's this really great contrast between Buster's friendly disposition. Okay, so disposition is just the way that somebody behaves. Okay, it's their the mood or the personality that they always have. You know, somebody can have a friendly disposition or like a very uh, negative disposition, like a sad or angry disposition. So contrast is just this extreme difference between two things in a situation. So in this first story, there's this brilliant contrast between this friendly, happy, very talkative guy who just walks into bars where people seem to hate or dislike him very strongly immediately. And it always ends up in a bar fight and lots of violence and he just shoots everyone in the bar because he's just got this smile on his face, but extreme talent with his gun. You know, he's got a very quick draw. So when you see a cowboy in a Western movie, they've always got their gun and a gun holder, okay, around their waist. So the gun holder is also their, their holster. So the verb to draw just means to, when they pull the gun out of their holster to shoot. So Buster Scruggs has got a really quick draw. You know, he pulls his gun out of his holster very quickly. So in another bar, he has a problem with a guy over a poker game, okay? They're sitting down gambling at a table and he has some problem over the poker game. So he shoots the guy and then for some reason starts singing with everyone in the bar. And everyone in the bar joins in and the piano player joins in. And it's this big song, Surly Joe. Surly Joe, Surly Joe. And everyone's clapping, singing along, stomping their feet, you know, stomping, kind of like hitting your foot against the ground. So you're really left just like scratching your head. You know, it's like the, the most confusing movie ever, but, it, but it's great. So poker, if you don't know, is just a very popular gambling game played in the West. So you play poker with a deck of cards, okay, a deck or a pack of cards or like a set of cards. So you play with a, a deck of cards and you play with poker chips. So poker chips are those small round kind of discs that you play with and those poker chips represent money and you normally see poker players pushing those poker chips into the middle of the table and those chips represent cash. 
So I'm not going to tell you how this first story ends, but it's brilliant and I really recommend that you watch this movie. It's great because this movie kind of feels like an adventure to me, you know, like you're, you're meeting these strange, weird, fascinating characters and nothing about this movie is really predictable, you know, you, everything about it kind of seems fresh and you're going on this new weird adventure. And myself, I watched this movie on Netflix. So if you have Netflix, you can watch this movie too. Hopefully it's available in your region. So the Coen brothers have also directed and produced other great movies, you know, classic movies that, you know, a lot of people love. Uh, so these movies include Fargo, No Country for Old Men, The Big Lebowski, which, which is a serious classic. I mean, I really love that film. Raising Arizona, uh, Where Brother, uh, what is it? Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? and Miller's Crossing. So if you've seen one of those movies before and you liked it, you're probably definitely gonna like the, the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. So before we finish this podcast, I just want you to do one thing. So throughout this podcast, I presented, well, hopefully, I presented a lot of new vocabulary and expressions and slang and things like that. So if you want, go back to the start of this podcast and listen again. And when you hear me present that, you know, that new, those new expressions and that new vocabulary, really try and visualize and imagine a strong picture that you can connect with that new vocabulary. All right. So when I mention canyons, really try and visualize and see a picture in your mind of those rock formations and those, that kind of mountain scenery. Or when I speak about poker, really try and imagine the poker game. You know, imagine, imagine all the guys gambling around a table, imagine the, the deck, deck of cards, the, the poker chips, all of that. And try and do that for all the vocabulary and try and memorize it. And after finishing the podcast, at home or wherever you are, just try and sit down and try and, from memory, explain the same story to yourself. Okay, try and remember all of the ideas that I presented in this podcast. Try and tell that story to yourself. Try and tell it using your own expression and your own style, yeah? In your own words. But try and use as many of those new interesting words and expressions and slang as possible. You know, those words and expressions that I presented in this podcast. Try and use them in your explanation or in your retelling of the story. Because a lot of students learn very passively where they just read and listen or watch but the, the vocabulary and the information only goes in and they never use it. So it's only language in. But what you really want to do is get the language to come out. Yeah, so after studying, you know, language goes in. After that, just try and explain it to yourself to, to get the language to come out. And what I see is that this really helps students to hold on to that new vocabulary. Because a lot of students have like this small, safe group of words that they use to explain everything. But the more you can try and get these new words to come out when you're explaining, you're just building your vocabulary. And what you can do as well is try and record yourself explaining these ideas and explaining the story. And then after you finish recording, just sit down and listen to the recording again and try and pay attention to how many new words and new expressions you used. You know, maybe focus on your grammar as well, but you know, mostly focus on how many new words and expressions and slang you used. This is just a great way to just really see yourself improving. And try and do that for all of my podcasts because for every podcast episode, I'm going to present a new topic and I'm going to present new vocabulary and expressions and slang. So at the end of every podcast, try and do the same. Try It's called paraphrasing. Okay. It's paraphrasing or kind of like summarizing, but you're basically trying to retell the story and use as many new words and expressions as possible. But the really important thing is to visualize when you're listening to the podcast, because the more you visualize, this is a much better way to memorize things. And when you retell the story, you're going to see that it's much easier to retell a story when you listen properly and when you visualize the story properly. So that's it for this podcast. And I hope you enjoyed learning about this topic. And I hope to see you in the next episode. So ciao, adios, sayonara, goodbye, speak soon. Credit for the music goes to Jason Shaw for the tracks South of the Border, Tennessee Hayride, Back to the Woods and Plantation under the Creative Commons license 3.0. You can find Jason Shaw's music at freemusicarchive.org.